You will not have any speech there? <laughs> okay, so uh, welcome again at uh, developer conference. Uh, we'll present to you uh, Apache Cordova. Uh, it will be a light overview of uh, this technology. Uh, so if you, if you are familiar with it, uh, it will not be probably for you. It will not go into depth of uh, Apache Cordova. Uh, first, let me introduce myself. I'm Andrzej Skutka and I work as a supervisor for web technologies in Red Hat Company. And this is Lukáš Fridž. He works as a developer uh, also in Red Hat Company. It's, yeah, software engineer. Uh, he works for uh, in the Rich Faces team. Uh, so what we will talk about today. Uh, first, I will mention uh, the importance of uh, mobile applications in today's world. And then I will show you how difficult it is to write portable applications. But then I will show you uh, the solution for this problem. And that's uh, hybrid applications and especially Apache Cordova. Yeah. Uh, and we will show you uh, a few exam examples uh, so that you will be ready to use the Cordova uh, in your own projects. So first, uh, a little survey. Who knows uh, Apache Cordova? Okay, our phone gap. Yeah, the same people, approximately. <laughs> uh, so this this graph uh, shows you the rise rise of the mobile phones uh, or the mobile internet and uh, the declension of uh, the traditional desktop uh, internet. Uh, this is India uh, market. Uh, it, in the worldwide th terms, uh, it has not overtaken yet, but the uh, trend is pretty obvious that uh, you and uh, all the developers will have to work with uh, mobile devices and its, it's basis will be the basics in the future. So another survey, who is familiar with this language? As Objective C, I see two hands there. <laughs> okay, almost three. <laughs> okay, uh, this language is needed if you want to write native applications for uh, iOS devices. Uh, well, looking at the audience, I think I cannot scare you with Java. <laughs> so I will not ask who knows Java. Uh, by the way, this is an actual code from uh, Shuring Reps Maven Resolver. It's really nice. Uh, to write portable applications or uh, applications for all the devices, uh, all the mobile devices that are on the market, you would need all these technologies. Uh, and some of, uh, some of the technologies can be run, for example, on Mac-only machines or on Windows machines. And you need all these languages to do so. Uh, if, you, if you really create uh, some application that is supposed to be portable, you would then have a big problem uh, synchronizing all these versions together. So, uh, Another stupid question, I will not ask that. Who knows HTML5? Uh, the, the thing is you don't have to know HTML5, it's enough to know HTML because in HTML5 it's just a bunch of uh, JavaScript libraries, but yeah, there are some new, uh, new APIs. I will talk about some of those. Uh, do we have, yeah. Demo time. So uh, what you can do with uh, HTML5? Uh, <laughs> okay, we have, yeah, actually, uh, if you scanned the QR code on that uh, flyers uh, that were there, uh, one of those codes, the left one, is for web application. 
It's written in HTML5 using, uh, using reveal.js tool. And that's it. <laughs> OK, it's advanced technology. OK. Could you switch, please, back to the slides? Thank you. Uh, so what is a hi hybrid application? Uh, what you have just seen is a web application in trans in web browser. There are native applications, that's the Objective-C and, and such, and Java, uh, but you can combine these worlds and have hybrid application. You take a, an HTML application and you wrap it in a native shell. And that's uh, exactly what Cordova does. Now, we'll show you uh, a hy hybrid application, and on the flyers, it's the left QR code. It should take you uh, to, to cloud, and uh, you may install an application, hybrid application, Cordova application, into your mobile phone. Uh, if, if you have a uh, capable mobile phone, and this can be uh, all the smartphones except for iOS, I have to apologize here because, uh, because we haven't managed to uh, get the developer's uh, certificate that is needed to, uh, for the phone get built. Uh, so this is an, uh, yeah, on these <laughs> devices you can see on the background, that's iPad that runs uh, the web application. And uh, these, yeah, this is also a web application, but this one is a uh, hybrid application. And uh, actually, some of the devices here are so-called masters and can control uh, the slides. So as you can see, if we switch slides, it will switch on all the devices. And if you have installed that application or you have tried the uh, web version on your mobile phone or desktop, uh, you should also see the slides moving back and forth as, as we move it. Uh, you may, however, uh, de-synchronize your, uh, your slides. Uh, if, you, if you go back to the slides where we are at, it will be synchronized again. I hope this works. What it does in the background is, if, if you are interested, uh, is, <laughs> is uh, that there's uh, Node.js server uh, on, on, uh, on the OpenShift cloud and uh, the socket IO library uh, that uh, yeah connects those. Yeah. Okay, where are we? Yeah. So, if you create uh, such an hybrid application, you may use all the uh, web technologies. HTML5 technologies that are there, like jQuery or jQuery Mobile to have the uh, native look and feel for your application. You may use Sencha or the Sencha Touch for the native look and feel. You may even use GWT, and uh, it's, it's actually a Java uh, framework, but it compiles into HTML, and uh, you may then wrap it up in a Cordova. Or you may use tools like Reveal.js, which is what you have just seen. Now we will show you uh, what is PhoneGap. Uh, PhoneGap is a productized version of Apache Cordova. It's uh, 
more tested and it has uh, a lot of services uh, on top of it. One of, one of those services is uh, PhoneGap Build. You have your HTML application, you zip it in a file and send it to the server, and the server will create packages for your mobile phones. It uploads them to the cloud and provides you with a QR code uh, to, to download that application to your mobile phone. That's the uh, QR code you have on your flyers. Uh, we, Lukash, I think we may skip it and move on. It will take a couple of minutes before the build is actually built. Yeah, except iOS because uh, we don't have the uh, key for iOS. Oh, you have an error there. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, Next chapter, what we uh, want from mobile applications. What are, specific, what are the specifics of uh, mobile applications compared to desktop applications? Uh, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is geolocation. You probably don't run uh, in a city with a desktop. Uh, there's accelerometer for uh, rotating the device. And there's, for example, camera, but you know, you can have uh, cameras and desktops too. Uh, status notifications, uh, compass, uh, connection info, this is interesting because uh, in, with desktop you always uh, suppose that uh, you have uh, full connection to the internet while uh, when you're at uh, when you are on mobile, you have to, in your application, count with whether you're connected, uh, whether you're connected at all, or you're connected uh, via uh, 2G, 3G, 4G network or Wi-Fi. And according to that, you download more or less uh, data, like uh, do full synchronization or or just uh, headlines or whatever. And of course, uh, calls uh, you probably have in your, depending on your application, you want to have uh, information about uh, the context you have in your phone and uh, for example, to write them messages or whatever. So what does Cordova provides for us? Uh, there's a bunch of, uh, bunch of APIs actually, uh, like besides what I have mentioned, there's capture uh, media, there's plenty of those. Plus, uh, there are plugins for Cordova. Uh, Cordova is very easily pluggable and uh, in community, there's ton of, tons of plugins available for Cordova. So if something if you miss something here, it's, there's a great chance that it's written uh, in community space. How does it work? Well, you have your HTML5 application, uh, probably with some framework like jQuery Mobile to have the native look and feel. Uh, and uh, then you have Cordova API. The these two uh, make uh, calls to JavaScript to native bridge, uh, which kind of translates the JavaScript that you have written in your application uh, to the native code or native API of your uh, phone. And there are these uh, plugins, all these uh, I, I have shown to you uh, here are actually also plugins. So there's a bunch of plugins there. Hello world. This is not the most basic uh, hello world, most simple one. It would be just an HTML page. 
Uh, but this one actually, uh, note here, oh, sorry. Note here uh, that we have loaded Cordova.js, but the Cordova.js itself uh, initializes asynchronously. So we have to provide a callback uh, that is, uh, the event is uh, fired when Cordova is ready. We have to provide a callback function so that uh, our application talks to the uh, to Cordova that is already set up and ready. So we have onload function in the body, uh, which is fired uh, when the page is loaded. And in that onload function, we add another callback called device ready. This is Cordova specific. Uh, and when uh, the device is ready, uh, this callback is called and we may uh, use the Cordova application or uh, the APIs from here. So this is an, an the entry point of your application. A more advanced Hello World is jQuery Hello World because jQuery itself also uh, initializes asynchronously. So you have to provide, you have to be sure that both events have been fired and uh, the thing uh, the way how you do that is that in your on-device ready uh, event, which is called when Cordova is ready, you uh, write an event as uh, document.ready, which is called when uh, jQuery is ready. So in, uh, in that that was the uh, entry point of uh, your application. Uh, for mobile phones, uh, the applications have different permissions. Like uh, you probably have seen this uh, before uh, when you install uh, an application that whether you want to allow your allow your application to use some, for example, camera or in this, yeah, that's camera uh, or not. Uh, this is written in XML files in your uh, application with in a similar way like uh, plugin, camera, uh, and with this you tell uh, the Cordova to ask for these permissions. If you uh, make your application for yourself, uh, it's wise to, to just uh, copy and paste all the possible permissions not to uh, deal with that. But if you uh, want to make your application available via App Store or uh, Google Play, you would need to cut them down to, to the uh, only in those who are really needed. So I will now show you uh, some, some basic uh, APIs, how would you use that, and you will find out that it is really easy. Uh, it's uh, here, you ask Cordova to get you current position uh, with GPS or Wi-Fi. Uh, and you provide a callback, which is called when uh, the device gets the, uh, gets the position. And uh, you can do whatever you want to do with, with that position. In this case, uh, we just write the position into geolocation HTML element. Uh, you might want to uh, watch the position so that when you're moving, it changes continuously. And uh, the way you do it is that you just uh, replace get current position with watch position and uh, you provide an options for that, in this case, uh, 30 seconds. And every 30 seconds, it gets updated and your callback function is called. Uh, accelerometer uh, is very similar uh, API, uh, the only 
difference is that uh, you will you will get different object in this case XLR acceleration uh, camera. Uh, you can do a lot of things with camera, uh, taking uh, pictures, getting them from uh, from your photo library. Uh, I, I think <laughs> uh, you can you can encode them in uh, uh, 60, base 64, or you may have them written on a f in a file on the file system. Uh, you may ask for JPEG. You may ask for uh, PNG. You may ask for specific quality of that picture. Uh, the options there are uh, pretty vast. Vast. Uh, here, here are some of uh, all of them. Sorry. Uh, interesting thing is that you may, as a source, you may ask for photo library or saved photo album. Uh, this is because uh, in iOS devices these are different. In Android, uh, it's it's the same thing. So when you write your uh, application and you want it to be portable, there are catches there. Similarly, for example, when you write uh, your application for, for iOS device, they don't have back button. You have to provide back button. That's also something you have to, uh, you have to care about. Connection API. Uh, I've already talked about it. Uh, it's wise to to use uh, to use connection or to to download data for your application according to which connection uh, you actually use. Uh, the uh, this application. Uh, application that uh, Lukáš uh, is showing you uh, is actually Cordova with uh, jQuery mobile uh, layout. Uh, it's, it shows uh, uh, PhoneGap API, and uh, you may you may download that from App Store or uh, Google Play and or Play Market or whatever they call it now. Uh, and play with it and uh, try it for yourself. Uh, you may you may tackle with context in uh, contexts in your uh, in your mobile device. Uh, in this example, uh, it is shown how to create a new contact there. Uh, again, this is uh, some specifics for. Uh, different devices, display name and nickname could be different on some uh, devices. However, for example, for Android, it's the same thing. But you would want to uh, assign both so that your application is really portable. And uh, yeah, then you just save it. And uh, I haven't written on success and on error. Uh, callbacks, I think those are already cl clear. You may find uh, ser search through your contexts. Uh, in this case, we are looking for all VAPs here uh, as, a, as a display name. Yeah, and, and it will just uh, pop up with how many of them uh, it has found. Uh, the contacts have many properties. Uh, apart from the apparent one, like name and uh, surname, uh, there are, uh, for example, IMS, which contains lists of, uh, for example, Google Talks, Jabber accounts, and uh, instant messaging. Uh, but again, this is not supported by all the devices. 
you have to check uh, against the uh, PhoneGap or Cordova API to know which one is used in which uh, operating system or device. Uh, Compass is, is uh, again, very obvious. You just uh, call the get uh, current heading, provide a callback function, and you can do whatever you want to do with that. <laughs> or you may, again, watch the heading. So again, you uh, change the function to watch heading, provide options, in this case, three seconds, and that's it, easy. Cordova also provides you with events. Uh, we've already met the device ready event, which is fired when uh, the Cordova is ready to serve your uh, needs. Uh, some interesting ones are online, offline, uh, so that you don't have to check the connection every three seconds or whatever. Uh, pause resume, it's uh, for, for uh, media. And the buttons here, uh, oh, here are, again, very uh, device specific. So watch out. Uh, battery critical, battery low, battery status, I think it's, it's obvious. Battery status uh, is fired whenever uh, battery status changes, so yeah. There's also some support for globalization. Uh, you can convert strings to uh, numbers, uh, numbers to strings. You can convert dates uh, to your uh, national uh, according to your national customs. Uh, you may uh, ask uh, which language uh, is prefer preferred by the uh, user. Uh, the usual stuff you, you probably want to uh, use if you really want to create an international application that is available to, uh, to the world and to all the devices. Uh, file uh, API, it's uh, W3C compliant. So uh, you actually use just HTML5 uh, code and it will work automatically in Cordova. Uh, there's in a browser, you can uh, load pages from the internet in your uh, application. Uh, with this parameter, you say whether you want to have uh, the URL bar uh, on the top or not. Uh, it provides also uh, some additional events like uh, load start, load stop, and exit. Yeah, and there's media, which is uh, not W3C compliant. Uh, and uh, th this API might be removed in the future versions. Uh, but currently it uh, does uh, what it says, like playing, playing audio, uh, stopping, uh, pausing, uh, moving forward, uh, backward, and it can also record audio. So you can, you can create your own uh, media player if you want to. Oh, yeah. It's very easy to use. You just provide the uh, source. Could be uh, <coughs> on the internet, for example, an MP MP3, and uh, call, play, and it will start playing. That's it. Again, uh, you, you will need uh, some permission to use media uh, on your device. Uh, this is actually uh, very uh, advanced example, uh, it plays, uh, plays media, it can stop it, uh, pause it, and it's actually a player, I, I will skip it. You can, you have it in your slides, so you can go through it by yourself. <coughs> uh, 
the API, Cordova API provides uh, notification uh, for you. Uh, you may call, for example, vibrate and the phone will uh, vibrate, uh, beep. Confirm is a pop-up where you specify uh, the buttons and it has native look and feel uh, and also the alert that's similar to confirm. So yeah, the example shows you how to uh, vibrate for two and a half seconds. Don't try large numbers there. Uh, storage, it's again uh, W3C compliant. Uh, you have kind of a database on your device uh, and you can use uh, SQL uh, there. In this case, we uh, create a table and insert two values there. It's, I think, self-explanatory. Oh, and we are at the end. So, <laughs> uh, what you have just seen is that uh, creating mobile applications can be really easy. It was always uh, like one or two lines there, and you get a great functionality out of it. And all the rest is just HTML. You already know that. This can be applied to uh, all the devices and all the families that are there. Uh, so this is really unique for hybrid applications. And if you, if you have this intention, I think that's the only way forward. And uh, I, I hope you have uh, thought about creating your first mobile applications and uh, by this time you have the knowledge to do so. So please do, when, when you get to your home, uh, try it, it's really easy. And uh, I, I want uh, to uh, mention that there will be uh, Stefan Bunchak and Vlado Pakan talking about uh, hybrid mobile applications in JBDS. Uh, so it, it will be a workshop, you can have hands on there and uh, try it. You may find uh, more information on cordova.apeche.org or on phonegap.com or erogear.org. I haven't mentioned that much, never mind. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you may uh, we will answer them now, but if you don't have, uh, don't ask now, you may uh, catch us at uh, my email and this is Lukasz's free, uh, <coughs> Twitter account. So, uh, questions. What is your first question? Uh, you mentioned that the media API can be, or uh, they are planning to remove it because it's not W3C compliant? Uh, Yes, uh, it will mean not be removed probably, but, but replaced with the W3C compliant one. And uh, I think it will be also renamed so that uh, you won't be confused. Uh, wh what was the name? Uh, does that answer our question? Okay. Mm -hmm. is, it, is, it, is this kind of feature possible, or is there some, something which uh, we think that will never happen to be standardized? Um, I think mo most of, most of the APIs will be standardized because uh, it's, a, it's a push of uh, most uh, most uh, great companies or more most big companies uh, around the world. So it's a it's a it's a composed strategy of Google. And But uh, there's actually one, uh, uh, a, few, because a few, few of those APIs are quite dangerous that you really need some kind of permission to do that. But uh, 
so and uh, I guess is there some standard going on how to do sunrise experiment battery experimentation for I don't know con uh, con your contact waste or something like that? Uh, none I know of, which doesn't mean it uh, it's not going on. So I, I cannot honestly answer this question. And for example, uh, the permissions you've seen there, oh, uh, it's uh, device specific. For each device, you, there's different set of, uh, of permissions you have to ask, and uh, you have to use different, uh, different XMLs to, uh, to do so. OK, next question, yeah? Mm -hmm. And no, make a second one. It also includes the native shadow. And if uh, someone downloads five of these applications, then he has to get five copies of the native shadow on the phone. Or how is that? I'm sorry. For oh, okay. Uh, and how big is this native shadow thing? I guess it's. Uh, it's could you check out how, how the jar uh, file. How big is the jar file? I could, there. but uh, I don't know where. <laughs> I, I thought on the on the computer. Okay. Would be the jar Can plus the JS. Thank you. <coughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, the two max, uh, the, the two max. You said it's it's the size of the application you have downloaded with the uh, presentation or from your. Uh huh. Thank you. Uh, but. <laughs> and uh, how big are the images we have there? One point four. That's <coughs> okay. So the yeah. Well, majority of uh, those devices have uh, WebKit based uh, yeah. browser. Only I believe only Windows Phone has uh, has. Uh, Explorer, but all, all of the others have WebKit based. Uh, uh, you have to be aware of that. However, if you use some uh, some to, uh, framework like uh, jQuery Mobile, it takes care of you uh, of, of it for you. So uh, the question was whether uh, there is a tool that would uh, tell me that uh, I should I should use uh, the nickname or uh, what was it uh, display name or f uh, probably also uh, the back button uh, that I should use it for iOS. Uh, I don't know about any such a tool. Uh, is anybody here who knows uh, that there is so, some tool like this? I know it's called JavaScript. I was uh, surprised with it. And, uh, <laughs> so not, not yet, but uh, I've, I've seen uh, this in some documentation. Uh, 
and uh, in some uh, books that they mention this, uh, but I, d I don't know whether there's some uh, information in one place that you just read and that's it, and or some tool that will check it uh, in your application. Next question, or uh, have I answered? No, I haven't, but <laughs> okay. Next question. Uh, we may show you. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, there are some things we uh, we will have to show them here, but uh, this is the this is the default uh, skin. You can see it in the in the application. But there are obviously some things which uh, which takes you very close to the to the <coughs> native DNA. Uh, you need to be aware that it's not uh, as fast as as the native, but uh, since uh, FedKit itself is Yeah, but uh, it, it's not completely uh, native look and feel. It, it, it looks really good. It looks like mobile application, uh, but there are differences between um, between native application and. Thank you. Uh, more questions? So thank you and enjoy the rest of the developer conference. <laughs> <laughs>